bomb daily. It's fashion B O M B daily.com. like the other boys do. They stare at me while I stare at you. Hey guys, my name is Claire. I'm a free woman living in the world and I love to shop on a budget and come with me as I find you. like the other boys do. They stare at me while I crave you. Hi, I'm Sam Tiavi of Disrupt TV and I'm here with the gorgeous Claire Salmers of Fashion Bomb Daily. So I've been a lot of places. Not as many as I should be with a dad like I can fly for free so I can go anywhere I want I would be out and about every week I know <laughs> and this might be my last year that I can do that so I really need to get on it but um we just went there for a family vacation oh, okay as far as your brand is concerned where do you want to take it I want to do more tv you know I have like this crazy knowledge of like what Beyonce likes to wear and like where she likes to shop it's, it's not just Beyonce it's Sierra and Rihanna and all sorts of things and I feel like you know I could bring that to life um, by being like a fashion expert on a show or you know maybe doing makeovers or something okay. like that but you know move more into multimedia books TV um, and events. What are your favorite designers? My favorite designers, let me look in my closet for my favorite designers. MFers. I'm not into it. I already know the game and I've been through it. You wanna step to me? Get into me. You got it all You wanna step to me? Get into me. You got it all You wanna step to me? Get into me. You got it all You wanna step to me? Get into me. You wanna step to me? 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 Chevron she it's a little trendy but I appreciate it. Um Roxanda Alinsic. Um who else? What do I have in the closet? Dear Jesus. Marnie. Um I like uh did I say Fausto Puglisi? I like him. Stella McCartney. Did I already say yeah, her? Okay. Stella McCartney <laughs> is like for sure. Um Helmet Lang. Um Ooh, don't say that. Don't that. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, what's a piece that you think every girl should have in her closet? Um, everybody should have a black pair of Christian Louboutin belts. Even if they hurt. <laughs> Even if they hurt. I actually gave mine away to my little sister because I wore them into the ground. But just one pair is good. Um, and aside from that, like a pair of really amazing sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Like I have on a lot of makeup right now, but generally speaking, when I'm not like doing an interview, I don't wear makeup and I just have a big pair of sunglasses and some lipstick. And you know, it, it creates a very striking look. Especially if you wear them inside. <laughs> People are like, who's that? But you know, I just enjoy like great great sunglasses okay so do you get stopped on the street a lot and do people recognize you so much to where you're just going in the stores and they're like claire fashion mom daily or do you get to just be you and um people do recognize me i try you know like i don't know i went to the museum yesterday and i went to see the kind of wiley exhibit and I was there with my friends, and I saw a girl go up to my friend and like talk to him, and then she like went away, and I was like, that's weird. But then we went out afterwards, and he was like, yeah, this girl came up to me, and she was like, is that Claire? And he was like, yeah. And he didn't even. It was like the first time it had happened to him. And then I ended up posting a picture on Instagram, and the girl was like, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, you look great. Even more, you're even more pretty in person. And I was like, oh. But it does happen a lot. But thankfully, it it kind of used to weird me out. But now I'm just like I'm very grateful for people who 
read the site, so if people ever see me out, I want them to come say hi. Yeah. Don't be scared. <laughs> come say hi to me. Okay, so what's a regular day for you? Well, it's so interesting because, like, so many people um, I interview say there's no regular day, okay. and there really isn't. An ideal day for me okay. would be like waking up at 8 a.m., having the first two blog posts up by 9, blogging, blogging, blogging to like 2, taking a nap, waking up, going to the gym, and then at night going to a party of some sort. But these days I travel a lot. Um, I was just in Milan for Milan Fashion Week. I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow for a trade show. Today I did a shoot all day for like seven hours. Wow. Now I'm talking to you guys, and I'm going <laughs> to dinner, and I'm going to a party. So it, it it varies, but you know I do try to fit in at least like you know three four hours of good blogging time a day. Piggybacking on Fashion Week, what's your favorite city to see Fashion Week? Well, I love Paris. I actually. Um, lived in Paris for two years. Do you speak French? I do speak French. Wow. Um, I worked at Paris Vogue and GQ Paris and um, Glamour Paris. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's where I really got my feet wet in fashion. Because before I was working in magazines that were, I worked at a home magazine, like I would freelance for Newsweek and Essence and things like that. But I wanted to switch my career in another direction, and so I decided to move to Paris. I knew like two people in the whole city, and I ended up getting a great internship at Paris Vogue, and seeing couture shows and Men's Fashion Week, and kind of being there for all of that. So it was really great. And aside from the designers, like you got Balmain, you got Long Vin, uh Valentino shows there, um, Miu Miu, so many great designers. But it's also like the most beautiful city by far, in my opinion, out of those four. You know, it's, it's just gorgeous. So even if you don't see the shows, you can just like bask in, in the beauty that is Paris, eat all the food, all the escargot, drink some great wine. Like, I love Paris. How did you get your start in magazines? Um, wow. Uh, well, I wanted to work in TV in college. Okay. I did internships at NBC, ABC while I was in college. I graduated and I could not find a job. And I was trying to like move to New York and my parents were like, no, you need to come home. So I went home to Atlanta, Georgia. And I was just kind of like twirling my thumbs and I was in the grocery store one day looking at magazines. I saw Upscale magazine. And I looked in the back, I, I ended up emailing the editor and came in for an interview and I was like, you know, I wanted to write stories for television. I was like, I can still write. So I went into Upscale and they were like, we only have an internship in the fashion and beauty department. And I was like, okay. And so that, that's where it started and I did really well at Upscale, I excelled. By the time I was done at Upscale Magazine, they'd offered me a full-time job but my sights were set on New York. So I moved to New York, I got an internship at New York Magazine, followed by an internship at Newsweek Magazine, followed by a job at Real Simple Magazine, and I stayed there for four years. I worked with some really great editors. I learned how to fact check, I learned how to write. Like, you know, my first story was torn apart by this editor. There was like red ink everywhere. But I think it was amazing, because, you know, I became a much better writer. And then I quit and I moved to Paris. And then here we are. Wow. Yeah. It was it was crazy. It was like God was speaking, but you know, I think doing that it 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 gave me the confidence to do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Like when you just say I'm gonna do this crazy thing and you actually do it, then you're like, I can really do anything I set my mind to. Okay. Okay, so Disrupt TV is really excited to bring you to Nigeria. Yes. What do you What do you hope for coming out there? Like, what do you want to see? What kind of fashion? What do you hope to immerse yourself in? Like, what What do you expect from Lagos when you go? I feel like I know Nigeria. <laughs> Legos. Like one of my best friends is Nigerian. Mm -hmm. It's actually her husband who pushed me um, 
towards moving to Paris. Like I have a lot of Nigerian friends. Y'all are very smart, ambitious people. So I've seen you. Like I, when I went to Harvard, so like all y'all were there it was like Caribbean people, and I should be and and a few Africans yeah. that sprinkled in. It's like um, I I feel like I I know a lot about the culture just through some of my best friends. A lot of my bombshells are from Lagos. Yes, they are. Um, I know a, a lot about um, Nigerian designers. I know a lot of Nigerian stylists. Um, so I'm just ready to, 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 to take it all in. Like, I know champagne is gonna be pouring. <laughs> um, you know, like, just getting a sense of what people are, are, are doing out there. Um, we've had some of our best bombshells from, from, from Yeah, I saw. Yeah. A young lady, she owns a shoe store. I'm trying to remember what her name is. But she was wearing Christopher Kane, Versace. She was like a dress. I was like, you better. <laughs> all right, girl. Like, I, I just want to see what it's all about because I feel like, you know. You've heard about I've it. I've heard so about now. it, but I haven't experienced it. Okay. So tell me about your hair. How? When did you decide to have dreads? Um, well, the dreadlock hairstyle was a part of my, excuse me, I'm sorry, words. okay, I'll start again. The dreadlock <laughs> hairstyle was a part of my whole African American studies okay. learning. Um, I was just like, I want my hair to be natural. And I was like, I don't need pro anything processed or anything like that. I don't need to, sh you know, chemically straighten my hair in order to be beautiful. So that's how it started. My advice to you is have faith, hope, and never give up on your dreams. <laughs>